Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Virtual Sunday School. Well today we're going to be talking about one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament, Elijah. But before we start talking about him, let's get a little bit of background. Now this takes place 50 years after King Solomon and the new king of Israel is a person named Ahab. Not the famous whaling guy, although if you think about it, the ego kind of got to both of them. Ahab spent years hunting the white whale that crippled him, quest for vengeance. But in the end, it destroyed him and his ship. But that's beside the point. So Ahab marries this woman named Jezebel. Now, why is that important? Because Jezebel came from a tribe that was pagan. They worshiped this false god called Baal. And this is where we're gonna see the story of the prophet Elijah. Now, what Ahab tried to do is to bring these two cultures together, the Israelites and now the pagans. And so what he did was he brought the Lord God together with Baal, and he made Baal like the supreme god, the god of thunder. Think of like Zeus and the lightning bolts. And the Lord God, which we worship today, kind of got demoted to being the nature god. And this is where Elijah comes in because this situation can't stand. We all know that there is only one god, and that's what Elijah was going to prove. So all of a sudden, in the Bible, Elijah just kind of appears out of nowhere. And so this old man goes up to Ahab and says, Hey, Ahab, I'm telling you right now that your God, Baal, he ain't nothing. All right? Through the power of my God, I am going to bring about a drought across all of this land. And if your God, Baal, is truly God, the God of thunder and rain, he will make it rain. Let's see what he can do. So guess what happened? You got it, there was a drought. And this made Ahab and especially Jezebel very angry. And so Elijah became a fugitive in his own country. So God came to the rescue and said, Hey, Elijah, you gotta hide out. So he brought him to this remote place of the desert and to help keep him alive, he had ravens bring him food, kind of like a first grub hub. Now there was a river in this part of the desert and when that river dried up and he didn't have anything to drink, then God came to him again and said, there is this woman and I want you to go to her and she'll take care of you. And this was a widow who was living alone with her son and they barely had anything to eat. I mean, they had a little tiny bit of oil and they had a little bit of flour and they were struggling to make it. You know, barely a crust of food. And then out of nowhere comes this crazy old man shouting, God has sent me, give me your food. I barely have enough crumbs of food to feed myself and my son. And Elijah responded by saying, Woman, don't worry, God will provide. Now imagine if something like this happened to you. For example, you're ordering out at Pizza Hut for your whole family and you're eating pizza, but then all of a sudden, Pizza Hut closes and you're left with one slice of pizza for your entire family. And some crazy guy comes up to you and says, give me your last piece of pizza and your Coke and I'll provide for you. You'd think to yourself, oh no, I think this guy's a little bit crazy. But what would you think if that next day you open up the pizza box and not only is there a whole pizza in there, but it's double pepperoni and stuffed crust. Well, that's exactly what happened with Elijah and with the widow is the oil and the flour kept multiplying and it kept them all fed throughout the entire drought. So now you'd think this would be the end of the story, but it's not, because then what happens? The son dies. You cursed me, you crazy old man. No, my only son has died. How are we gonna provide? And Elijah says again, the Lord God will provide. And so he prayed to God and he was restored back to life. Now, some of these miracles should seem very familiar to you from the New Testament. Jesus multiplied the bread, the oil of the 10 virgins kept multiplying, and we have Jesus who resurrects Lazarus from the dead. 
So we have a lot of similarity between the miracles of Jesus and these miracles performed by Elijah. Now, what I want you to understand is the major difference between what Elijah did and what Jesus did. Remember, this is the first resurrection in the Bible. This is the first time that somebody's been brought back from the dead. And not like some kind of zombie movie or something like this. The story isn't called Zafra and the Zombie of Endless Flower. The son was literally brought back from the dead, but it wasn't Elijah that did it, it was his prayers to God and God resurrected him. When Jesus resurrected Lazarus, Jesus did that miracle and that shows us that Jesus is truly God. But now it was time for Elijah to face Ahab and Jezebel once again. But that's our next story. So thanks everybody for joining us. Remember, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you soon.